said I'ma crush it. Call me. Hi, I'm Anthony Walker, your host of Unsung, our region's nonprofit online news magazine show. Today, we're here on North Shore, back in front of the Mr. Rogers statue in honor of his birthday on March 20th. Today, we get a special tour of the ALS Association of Western PA's equipment closet and a special demonstration of the head mouse, a unique communications technology. We also jazz up the program with a story sent our way from Manchester Craftsman's Guild. Before we get to the news from our area nonprofits, we have some of our own. We are so excited to tell you that Unsung has received a silver award in the electronic publications category of the 2012 Wilmer Shields Rich Awards for Excellence in Communications, presented by the Council on Foundations. The award will be presented in Los Angeles on April 30th. We'd like to thank the nonprofit organizations for sharing their stories with us, enabling Unsung to be recognized as groundbreaking and innovative in engaging the public. So from us here at Unsung, thank you. Bricolage Theater, in collaboration with the August Wilson Center, will explore the power of theater as a response to social justice issues. The theater will present Dutchman by Leroy Jones, written in 1964, the year racial segregation officially ended in the United States. After the shows, there will be a variety of activities including panel discussions, poetry readings, and Q&As. More information is available at bricolagepgh.org. The Breathe Project shared a scientific paper released by researchers from Colorado School of Public Health that shows that air pollution caused by hydraulic fracturing or fracking may contribute to acute and chronic health problems for those living near natural gas drilling sites. It is based on three years of monitoring of residents living about a half mile from gas wells in a rural county in western Colorado, finding a number of potentially toxic hydrocarbons in the air. Other chemicals were reported, but information on their toxicity is reported limited. The respiratory and neurological effects, such as air emissions from natural gas development, is greater for residents living closer to wells, the study found. These include eye irritation, headaches, sore throat, and difficulty breathing. The researchers also calculated higher cancer risks for those living nearer to the wells. The Breathe Project is a coalition of residents, businesses, government, and many other groups in southwestern Pennsylvania that are working together to clean up our air for the health of our families and economy. You can join the coalition at breatheproject.org. The organization is asking that if any Pennsylvania residents are experiencing any of the issues mentioned in the study, to contact the project. Now, we send it out to Christopher Whitlatch on location at the ALS Association of Western PA's Millville offices. Christopher? Thanks, Anthony. You know, normally you see me on Unsung with a shirt and tie, but today's story is a little bit different. So I broke out one of my favorite t-shirts. This is why. Today I'm at the ALS Association of Western Pennsylvania. ALS is a disease that affects approximately 30,000 people in the United States. It's more commonly known as Lou Gehrig's disease, which is why I have my t-shirt on today. Lou Gehrig made it popular 70 years ago, and since that time, there's been progress, but there is still no treatment, no cause, and no cure. We're here today to talk with Merritt Spear, the Executive Director of the ALS Association of Western Pennsylvania, and get an in-depth look into the equipment closet. The mission of the ALS Association is above me. People with ALS and their families come first in everything we do. We're gonna find out why. It's a neuron disease, so it affects uh, neurologically the body, and it affects different people in different ways. Some people, it attacks their arms and legs and they get very weak uh, in their arms and legs and are unable to use their arms, unable to walk. Some people um, find that their speech starts to go right away. Um, eventually, um, breathing becomes difficult. Our number one priority here is to take care of people living with ALS, their families, their caregivers, the average cost for a person living with ALS is $250,000 a year. For people living with ALS, we provide communication devices, wheelchair loan program, we have respiratory equipment, we can provide transportation to and from hospital visits and clinic visits, we can provide respite care, 
hospice care, speech therapists. So this particular communication device um, is on a stand that is movable. And if you're confined to a bed, this can be pulled right up to the bed. Welcome to the ALS Association. Some people with ALS need a device like this one to communicate because they have lost the ability to speak. This particular one also has internet, email, so it really functions like a computer. This particular one has a built-in um, mouse. If you have no use of your fingers, um, the only way you can really control a mouse and move things is with your eyes or your head. This is a head mouse device that actually does fit on top of a regular computer and using a dot that is placed on your eyeglasses or your nose or your forehead, you can very easily move point and click uh, with the mouse. This is the same kind of device called a Tracker Pro, but it also tracks your eye movements and, and head movements. It's called a sip and puff, and by blowing and squeezing your lips around um, the end of this device, you can maneuver the mouse over your computer. Right now, we are serving about 150 persons living with ALS through our loan closet and our resources, um, but at any given time there are probably about 300 people in Western Pennsylvania living with ALS and in the state um, about a thousand, maybe 1100 people with ALS. We do not have an endowment, we do not get government or state funding. We really operate on the generosity of individuals, foundations, and corporation support. Our biggest fundraising event of the year is the Walk to Defeat ALS. Last year, the Johnstown Walk raised $50,000, which all went to patient services and care. The Pittsburgh Walk is always held at the zoo, so you can walk through the zoo and it's sort of built-in entertainment. And 3,500 people last year individuals raised $410,000. This quilt was made by a volunteer and it uh, illustrates some of the t-shirts that are made and worn by a lot of the teams that participate in the walk. I just thought I would point this out because um, Scott has lost the use of his arms and he created this t-shirt solely with the use of his eyes and also um, a chin joystick uh, which moves the mouse around. The walk as a national walk is the fifth largest walk in the country um, and locally our goal this year is to raise $500,000 for patient care. To get involved in the walk all you need to do is log on to our website. There's a link right there at www dot cure for the number four ALS dot org big Facebook presence the walk to defeat ALS you can Google search walk to defeat ALS and find a walk in your local area this year we are really looking for corporate sponsors it will be the first year we've had corporate sponsors participate in a big way we have several already um, and we have a wonderful corporate recruitment team led by Neil Alexander, who um, has the Live Like Lou fund at the Pittsburgh Foundation. Today's video submission was provided by MCG Jazz. Enjoy this story from local jazz musician Nelson Harrison, part of a national series. Mm. But that was the year, 64 that I got offered the job in the Jazz Messengers. I was playing in the Crawford Grill with John Hurd's quartet, Roger Humphreys was on drums, and a pianist named Freddie Tooks. And um, we were, uh, Gloria Lynn had come in with her show, and the Messengers were the opening act at Syria Mosque. And of course, everybody went to the grill 
when you were out, you went to the grill. Yeah, that was the, the grill and the hurricane. You yeah. usually would hit both clubs in a night. So John had been uh, playing during the week. Uh, I think he had a nine-day stint at uh, the Crawford Grill with Pete Henderson on trumpet. And Pete didn't show up Thursday night for the last week. And so he called me. He said, come on, finish out the week, man. Pete, I don't know where he went. You know? So I came and finished out the week. Well, that was Thursday night. And then Friday was the Glory Lynch show. And we were playing, and I remember this distinctly, we were playing Nika's Dream. The club was pretty empty. Mm -hmm. And I always played with my eyes closed because playing in the dark, you know, that's... Mm -hmm. I was soloing when Art Blakey came in the club. And when I opened my eyes, he was standing there at the bottom of the bandstand, and Freddie Hubbard and Curtis were over at the bar. Oh, yeah. I looked around, I said, I nodded to him, you know, and when the song was finished, because I was doing the announcing, oh. I introduced him, you know. So we featured Roger. It was the next to the last song I said, so we said, let's feature Roger. So we called Strike Up the Band that fast and just let Roger have it, you know. He said, or he played, you know, great. So we finished the set. And the stage was up a little higher than it is now, and you had to walk down the steps. When Roger walked down the steps, he doesn't remember it as well as I do, but when Roger walked down in the steps, Art Blakey was standing there, he looked at Roger like this, he said, I don't talk to no African drummers. Which was <laughs> <laughs> so a compliment, you know. So we went over to the one booth. It's a booth that August Wilson used to always sit in. And um, Art ordered a whole fried chicken. <laughs> he said they're eating this whole fried chicken and Roger and John are sitting across from him and I was across the aisle he looked at me like this can I swear? oh I, absolutely Okay. he looked at me like this he said Bonesky I like what I'm hearing why don't you come on go to New York with me there's only two bands in my life I want to play with The Messengers mm -hmm. and Basie mm -hmm. I said, wow. I said, I'd love to, Art, but I'm in medical school. You ain't no doctor, my <laughs> you musician. <laughs> <laughs> I said, yeah, but the life, best life you ever had. He got so mad at me, he wouldn't talk to me. He talked to John and Roger, you know, and they were having a conversation. He'd look up at me. Musician. Do one of those. <laughs> he came up and played a whole set with us. Wow. You know, it was nice, you know. But that was my shot, and I didn't take it. <laughs> Join the August Wilson Center on Monday, April 2nd at 7 p.m. for the fourth annual August Wilson Monologue Competition featuring Pittsburgh High School students. This event is free and presented by the Bill Nunn Theater Outreach Project. More information at augustwilsoncenter.org. The 2012 Deaf Wrestle Fest takes place at the Western PA School for the Deaf on Sunday, April 29th at 6 p.m featuring the living legend Bruno San Martino, as well as several handicapped wrestling stars such as Gregory Iron and former WWE talent Zach Gowan, proving anything is possible. Details at deafwrestlefest.vze.com. Pulse Pittsburgh presents Pulsation on Friday, April 13th. You can learn how they are impacting Pittsburgh in a social setting at the Union Project. Details at pulsepittsburgh.org slash pulsation. Thanks for watching this episode of Unsung. Be sure to share it with your friends. You can check out previous episodes and our Unsung Uncut series on pittsburghonvideo.org. I've been your host, Anthony Walker, reminding you to keep it awesome, Pittsburgh. We'll see you next time. I said I'ma crush it Call me the golden boy Cause it shine whenever I touch it Don't rush it The flow comes naturally Actually The whole hood after me Masterpiece I outran a pace car And these dudes f***ing mad Cause they can't even find a day job I stay hard with or without Viagra And I said the flow crush Like the force of Niagara I'm master a major label budget But since I'm not pop top 40 They all scared to touch it